Hello and welcome back to AW Services. If this is the first time viewing my channel, then please hit subscribe. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up as well. In this video, well, I will be fitting a GoTech USB floppy emulator drive, which is the GoTech emulator, which replaces the floppy drive in the original equipment. The equipment in question is an Akai S2800 or 2800 Akai professional sampler. I've already previously done in another video an Akai S2000. I've now got the S2800 sampler. I want to get rid of the floppy drive. Um, I don't have the operating disc for it. However, I've spent good money and used Chris at CP Magnetic Media that's been very helpful and supplied me another GoTech floppy emulator. Also, just to plug in the video, Chris is selling off some previously used personal studio equipment. Details on screen if you can see them. If not, uh, you can contact him at cpmagneticmedia at gmail.com and he has some equipment from his own personal studio collection for sale as well. I purchased this on eBay. It took just a few days to get here one of the quickest parcels on ebay again special delivery first class these people don't mess around they take your money they ship your goods to you very quickly so in the video we're going to crack on and we're going to go ahead and try to install the floppy emulator safety warnings for the snowflakes out there ensure your device is switched off and unplugged from the mains for some time there may be live capacitors inside on the power side of the board they could remain charged so be very careful what you're doing be very mindful that you're dealing with equipment over 30 years of age so you could have brittle connections ribbon cables and bits of equipment inside that could be damaged so to get the Akai apart you've got four screws to each side and one on the rear of the case before I start I will get a container put the screws in Nothing worse than losing the screws or having a screw loose, which I think I already have. A great lazy man's electronic screwdriver, very similar to the Black & Decker's from the late 80s, early 90s. So four screws. If you've not done one of these before, it may be a good idea to also very carefully clean the inside of your machine out as well at the same time. Because they do contain a lot of dust, dust con conducts heat. He reduces the life expectancy of your machine. I previously taken mine apart when I received it and I've given it a deep clean and blown out of an airline. So I've got a completely dust free environment. So the GoTech floppy emulator, just gonna try the best frame you in the camera. This here is the floppy drive and it sits with on a cradle. So good tips to bear in mind when you're doing one of these is I like to write top on the top of the ribbon cable so I remember its orientation. I'm also making a video, so the video helps me for reference purposes as well. So the machine is switched off. I'm fully aware of all the electronics inside these machines and I'm very mindful of what I'm doing. But if you've not done one for the first time, follow along and I hope the video helps you. But so the first thing you need to do is very gently part the ribbon cable from the back of the original floppy drive. Just gently pop your fin fingernails in the crack and separate the ribbon ca cable as carefully as you can. Be very careful not to break it as it is very old. 
You also need to note the polarity of the said piece of equipment. So the polarity on this is positive to the floppy drive of the machine and the negative to the right hand side of the part of the machine. Also you need to look on the power board where your cable comes across and make sure you've got enough cable length to work with. Another very highly recommended thing to do is to check with a multi digital multimeter their actual voltage that is present at the connector to the floppy drive. Every floppy drive you buy will come with a detailed instruction guide from Chris. Color coded as well, red for warnings. So it's always be, to be very mindful that you read those as well. So on the back of it, it tells you here, before you use it, you also, it comes with a very high quality SanDisk memory stick which you need to back up the entirety of all of those folders on there in a folder and put it safe on a laptop. And also if you've got another one of these thumb drives, it's worthy to buy another one and to create a hard replica and put it in a little bag and put it somewhere safe. If you ever accidentally use a, an emulator and you delete the disc, because every file on there is actually a disc and a disc image. And if you lose all those, you've got nothing to refer back to. So instructions, we need to check that our power supply that's present is five volts. So then let me go and get an IC kettle lead. Like the last video I made, <laughs> very unorganized. So power the machine on, plug the IC kettle lead in the back. The machine is now live, so you be very careful of that. For our USB floppy drive emulators to work, we need, need five volts. So our machine is now live, it's switched on. Here are our contacts to our emulator or our disk drive. Be very careful where you place your fingers in the machine. Because as I've said, it is live. Doo -doo -doo. I have five volts present. So that's all good. We can now progress onto the next step. As I've said previously, I've done the S2, this, uh, S2000. So I know how that machine works. This is very similar. Our machine is now unplugged, removed from the mains. There's no cable in there, but we need to be very mindful again that the capacitors st could still remain charged. So to get this one out, we need to gently tilt the machine up. When you do this, put it on its side because you might damage the SCSI ports on there. And we have four screws on the underside of the machine. Let me just rearrange the GoPro. We have four screws, screw here, screw here, screw here, and screw here. You also need to hold with your hand inside the rear of the machine or the top of the machine. You also need to hold the carriage that holds your floppy drive so it doesn't just drop out and fall into the base of the machine and damage your PCB circuit board. Now, very lift out from the rear, 
our original floppy drive. Let me reposition the camera for you. So our original floppy drive is now removed and we have removed that from the carriage. It looks like some little fingers have been in this machine previously before I got it because the original floppy drive wasn't secure and the screws were hanging out of it. So, you know, it's again, duty of care, looking after your equipment. If you don't look after it, it's not gonna last five minutes. So our original floppy drive is removed. It's probably not even an original, but there you go, that's out. Our orientation of our carriage cradle goes into our machine in this orientation here. So our floppy drive sat in like that and it stands up quite high within the machine as well. So we need to, to replace this back into our machine in this orientation here. Put your floppy drive to one side. It's a very good idea to wrap that up in some tissue paper and then you can, if you want, put it in a plastic bag and cling film it to keep the moisture away from it and put it somewhere safe because you never know, you might need it again. Or if you go to sell your sampler and you're a bit of a tight ass like me, you might want to keep your GoTech emulator and just give it to the, the new owner with a floppy drive in it. So with the GoTech, you will get some jumpers, which are pin jumpers for the PCB on the back of the machine. However, yet I've still not needed to use them as I believe Chris at CP Magnetic Media personally sets up each of these per each machine they're sold to. So for this GoTech emulator, I actually searched on eBay through his store and matched up the title and the, the description of this to the S2800. Keep forget which model I've got. So with this, you don't use the original screws that came with the side of your floppy drive, but now you use some very small self-tapping screws because this is a plastic, like an ABS enclosure. So you need to line up the screw holes and very gently without using too much force. And for this point, really, you want to be using a normal manual screwdriver. Too much force and you'll crack the enclosure. So we just need to align the screws in there position before we drive them home just to make sure that everything lines up perfectly beautifully made the gotex are fantastic you know they're revitalizing a lot of old kit and you can fit them in a lot of equipment you can put them in pcs many people out there making them for various other drum machines samplers sequencers and so on so very very good quality All of our screws are lined up into our carriage assembly. Do these too tight, you will crack it, so be careful. Just nip them up. Someone's taken their time to make these enclosures and the tolerances are absolutely amazing on them. So our GoTech emulator is now secured within our galvanised carriage. Be very careful when using this that you don't snap off or shear the rotary encoder part on the front. We need to now reinsert our GoTech into the, the machine through the rear so it comes out through the letterbox in the front. Have I got it the right way round? I messed up. Need to make turn it round. It's easy to make mistakes. Mistakes are good because they're a learning curve. If you don't make mistakes, then you can't be perfect, and you won't be much fun when you're perfect. So we need to change the orientation of our carriage assembly. So it goes in this way. 
So if you've got an S2800, your carriage assembly is with the lesser part or the ridge where my thumb is on the right hand side. GoTech emulators have been out for quite a while now. There are quite a lot of people selling them. I don't know whether, or I don't know whether the GoTech, the GoTech may be a brand name, or it may be the name given to the initial concept of device device during uh, its design and testing. So someone must own the rights to the word GoTech, and they must own the design for the actual software and PCB within it, maybe. I know that there was talk on many of the forums and many of the YouTube videos that I'd seen where I believe they had to redesign the, them around the uh, microcontroller because they had an ST microcontroller and the price went up about 12 times more than it was normally from, I believe it was a dollar to twelve dollars or something so someone obviously put their prices up there has been a lot of big demand globally this last year or so with the price of semiconductors which are basically microchips i don't know whether that's because of the materials used in mind for them for them or just supply and demand going to be second time lucky yes if you like my channel um i would appreciate it if you could subscribe it helps my channel grow and the popularity of my channel i don't make any money out of my channel i've been doing youtube for quite some years but never really done it on a capacity where i want to start making money out of it i do what i do for my enjoyment and maybe to help others So our floppy drive is now inside the machine. We now need to pick the machine up by its rail while pinching on to the GoTech, lifting it up and then re-securing the screws that we took out from it. I will be producing another video. Let's tilt the camera. I will be producing another camera in the next week or so on the same machine, the Akai S2800 and that video will be the replacement EL screen backlight. Very common fault with the machines, as we've said previously, this one's 30 years old and the inherent problem being is the screen or the liquid crystal display in the screen loses its um, luminous, luminescence or its brightness over a long period of time. So there is a simple fix for that and it's an EL, electroluminescent um, retrofit system where you have some electroluminescent sheet which is cut perfectly and engineered to slide in behind the LCD display. No soldering required. I'm getting mine from a very good, credible supplier. So as soon as that comes, we'll have this sample in bits again. We'll take the front off and we will replace the screen um, illumination. Tilt the machine back down. I will go to let me readjust the camera. Our GoTech is now within the front panel and it lines up nicely. The choice of ABS plastic and the way that they've mixed it and produced the colour. This machine is um, 1992 and they've actually made the plastic the same colour to match the wear and environmental degradation of the original machine. So the original machines I believe were whitish, but they've gone a very creamy magnolia colour. So the plastic in the GoTech has actually matched the original machine absolutely perfectly. 
So our floppy drive, we need to get that back in in a second, one minute. Because the emulator is a little bit different in its size or its design, I have to cut the ribbon cable, cable tie to release the five volt power supply lead because it was a bit tight. So I'm gonna now, I've cut that free from its cable tie and I'm now gonna position this onto our new machine. Positive plus and minus five volts. So positive, as we said previously, goes to the left-hand side of the GoTech and you'll see the pins line up perfectly. Our ribbon cable, we need to ensure that when we put our ribbon cable in for our motherboard to our GoTech, that each and every single pin within the two rows there are, are lined up perfectly before pushing that back onto the rear of the machine. And we've now reseated. I'm now gonna get my power cable. Again, safety warning. Uh, the machine is now on. Doo -doo -doo. And the GoTech powers up, lovely. Just going to quickly check my pins are correct. Our machine is now powered up and uh, we have flash floppy v3.30 so that appears to be working we'll get our thumb drive memory stick i do apologize this video is a very natural video i don't say guys every five minutes i don't tap the lens it's a very honest normal video so Excuse the brakes and the gaps. Our floppy is in. And it's now booting up. If you see what I mean about my blue screen, that's the screen contrast on and off. And it's very hard to see it. But that's what our operating system is loading. And that is now working perfectly. Disconnect the power. Time to reassemble our machine now. Lid, the replacement of the lid. It has longer ears on one side, as you can see. So we need to put those back in behind the rack mount ears of the machine, gently. And the lid will sit on a lip, just on the top frame here. We then to get our case screws. Ensuring our holes are lined up in the machine. Again, these screws are 30 years old, so you haven't got to ram them in, and you don't want to cross thread them, and you don't want to strip the threads out of the machine either. And if you're doing this at home on your mum's best table or worktop, then you need to be careful you don't scratch it. So that really completes the installation of the GoTech USB floppy emulator drive. That was from Chris at CP Magnetic Media. Lovely guy, for faultless communication, easy to get hold of. Um, and lots of videos on YouTube or many others. These have been out for some time now. So there's lots of tips, hints and hacks on how to use these. 
My machine is completely standard other than the emulator. It doesn't have any mods, it's not been circuit bent. So it's very basic in, in its entirety. So the next video on this, I will be installing a electroluminescent LED panel to give me better and re kind of re replace the illumination that I've lost over the 30 years on my screen. But that's the completion of this video. Again, please support my channel if you can. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Post it on other forums. It may help other people to learn on how to do this. Not everybody is good at electronics, but this floppy emulator is a completely solderless job. And all you need is a pair of cable cutters to remove a cable tie and a small Phillips screwdriver. That's all you need to do this. Don't need any big tools. And it takes about five to 10 minutes when you know what you're doing. But thank you very much for watching. And I'll keep up with you in the next video. Take care.